Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now, I'm sure you've heard about how bad inflammation is for your health. Now, it's linked to numerous illnesses and poor memory, uh, decreased immune system, things like hair loss and pimples and wrinkles, and really just pain all over your body. Now, however, today I want to answer a viewer's question about omega-6 fats. And it goes, Dr. Sam, I'm confused about something. Some experts say oils which are high in omega-6 fatty acids are bad because they cause inflammation. But then other experts say they're good and we need to have omega-6 fats. So what's the truth? Why can't anybody agree on anything? Now, this is a great question because of the mass confusion and misinformation about this topic and honestly about lots of health topics. There's so much conflicting information. Additionally, because high consumption of omega-6 fats are also very toxic to your body, they cause inflammation and muscle loss and fat gain and hair loss and wrinkles and blood sugar problems and higher cholesterol and, and blood pressure and so on and so forth. However, the truth is we do need all of these omega fats, the threes, the sixes, the sevens, and the nines, and so forth. But again, it's always about balance and ratios. First, let me give you a list of the so-called you know, bad fats that are high in omega-6s, which are typically incorrectly called healthy vegetable or seed oils, such as sunflower, corn, soybean, peanut, and cottonseed. And the three worst being the sunflower, the corn, and the soybean oils, which are unfortunately found in most packaged and prepackaged foods. Now, even if you go to like a healthy place like Whole Foods, you'll see these oils being used in the foods that they prepare. And for sure, every time you go out to eat, the restaurants and so forth, they're all using these cheap oils. Even the healthy olive oil that you buy is typically mixed in with these unhealthy fats to again, save money. Now, these are cheap oils that are bad for you because they cause, again, massive inflammation by creating an imbalance in the omega fats, being much higher in sixes and almost devoid of the omega threes. Now, you see, for centuries and thousands of years, our diets naturally consisted of about a one to one ratio or as high as a three to one ratio of omega six to omega three fats. Again, they're equal, which is fine. But these days, it's much worse. It's like a 20 to 1 ratio and as high as a 100 to 1 ratio of the unhealthy omega-6 fats to the healthier omega-3 fats. Thus, a horrible imbalance and why there are so many health issues for your body and brain, again, all linking to inflammation. Now, even if you don't eat these fats, there is another issue with the animal proteins we eat. Again, such as the chickens and the eggs and pork and red meat and so forth, because they're also very high in omega-6 fats because of the horrible diets these animals are fed. You know, these animals are given soy and corn for food because, again, it's cheap food and they can be fattened up really quickly so, so they can make more money. And then the animals are also not free range and pasture raised. Thus, they're not eating what they're naturally designed to eat, which is like insects and grass, again, like nature designed them. So this causes an even higher imbalance in the omega-6 fats because of the foods these animals eat, and thus more inflammation and health problems. And as the saying goes, you know, you are what you eat, but you're also what you eat because of what the animal ate as well, since, you know, you're eating them. So these days, we're told to eat more omega-3 fats to help balance this high omega-6 fats. And this is a good suggestion, but this isn't necessarily a good idea either for a variety of reasons. First of all, you have to consume a lot of omega-3 fats to counterbalance this high omega-6 consumption. Second, the best source of omega-3s are from fish, the fatty fishes like salmon. But there's only so much fish you can eat, especially considering the heavy metals and the toxins in our waters and so forth. Third, consuming a ton of fish oils, you know, such as the ones that come in pills or liquid form, isn't the answer either. Keep in mind that we are warm-blooded animals. Fish oil is for fish, which are cold-blooded animals. Thus, fish oils oxidize quickly in our bodies because of the higher body temperature, which is not good. 
So maybe you can and should take a small amount, like maybe three or six grams daily, and maybe krill oil might be a little bit better. But again, there's a limit before there's more harm than good, especially long-term use year after year. Again, they're not designed for us. Fourth, you can take oils higher in omega-3 fats, um, such as the flaxseed, the plant seed oils, which is good. But keep in mind that most flax seeds are already rancid because they need to be refrigerated at all times, and most products, more, most flax seeds aren't. However, there's another problem. In order for the alpha linolenic acid, the LLA, in the plant-based oil, such as flax seeds, to have the same positive effects attributed to the omega-3s found in fish oils, it must be converted in your body to a limited supply based on the enzymes that you have, so it doesn't really convert to that powerful EPA, DHA. As a result, only a small fraction of these seed oils gets converted to the omega-3 fats and the positive effects, which is about maybe 10 or 15% or less. Thus, the remaining 85 to 90% gets just basically burned up as energy or metabolism in other ways. And unfortunately, the older we get, the worse the conversion, and thus there's less omega-3s that you get out of eating seed, you know, uh, flax seeds. So you have to consume a few tablespoons of flaxseed oil daily to get the same positive effects that maybe just one or two teaspoons of fish oil will give you. And that's a lot of oil you're going to have to eat with the flax seeds. That's more calories and, of course, is going to end up turning into more body fat. So after all is said and done, let's talk about the best solution and what I suggest in order of importance. The first thing you want to do is you want to eliminate or at least reduce these bad vegetable and seed oils such as sunflower and the corn and the soybean. So make sure you read the labels and they're found on, you know, they're typically found in most of these pre-packaged foods. Second, you must eat better animal protein. Things like wild caught salmon is great. Make sure that the chicken and the eggs are pasture raised or the red meat, you know, such as cow or bison is grass fed. Now it does cost more, but it's better quality and thus you need less protein and you're gonna be far healthier. Remember, it's about the quality, not the quantity. You can also take vegetable proteins such as hemp powder, which has a little bit, a uh, little bit of omega threes as well. The third thing you want to do is consume a little bit of fish oil daily, about two to six grams. Now, again, wild caught salmon is the best, or you can take the pills if you don't like eating fish. And to save money, I personally just eat the raw oil. Uh, but if you don't like the taste, you can just take the capsules, right? And you take a total, I take a total of maybe one tablespoon daily. You can take maybe about four to six pills daily. And lastly, and for some people most importantly because it's the easiest, you can take supplements that decrease inflammation since that's really the whole point of, of improving your omega-3 to 6 ratios. You want to take herbal extracts such as curcumin and turmeric, uh, ginger and boswellia, uh, green tea extract, pine bark, astragalus, resveratrol, quercetin, and a few others. Now, I take this natural veggie pill called Inflame and Pain Relief that contains all these ingredients and a few others. And this is especially important if you want to reduce, you know, joint pain and mobility and inflammation, as well as helping to improve memory and cognition and also help having a healthy immune system. Most importantly, if you're not going to stick to that super strict diet and, and limit all these bad fats and so forth, then make sure you take Inflame and Pain Relief and similar ingredients because it can dramatically undo a lot of the inflammatory damages caused by diet and stress. Again, it's just a pill you take, so it's super easy and you don't even have to change your diet. So there you have it. In summary, you want to reduce inflammation to live a healthier, longer, and happier, less painful life. First, avoid the foods that are high in these um, omega-6 fats. Um, add in a little bit more omega-3 fats, eat better sources of protein, and take natural herbs that are scientifically proven to help lower inflammation. And this is, again, especially important if you can't follow a super strict, you know, anti-inflammatory diet or lifestyle. Again, I've got more details below in the description area about all of this, uh, free videos, list of the best ingredients, supplements, and more. So take a look right now while it's fresh on your mind. 
Please subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you click that bell icon to be notified and leave your comments below today and let me know what you've learned, what questions you have so I can continue making videos for you specifically on the topics and questions that you have. As always, thanks, have a great day, and have a happy and healthy day.